morning everyone welcome to another podcast and firstly my apologies for the lack of podcasts this uh, spring and summer um, as you can imagine with the virus and everything the the tuition and the guiding has been full on trying to rebook everyone and get all those cancelled lessons from early spring done again but I've managed to grab an hour out on the river and um, it's a beautiful early, well, early early autumn morning some of the leaves are definitely definitely turning and there's some big piles of dry leaves on the road when I just pulled up it's really bright sunshine today it's one of them the river's fairly low and clear actually you can see the uh, vegetation up on the sides of the bank where it's been crushed down with some high water about two weeks ago and it really ripped through and it's, um, you can still see where the grass and the reeds are all bent over but actually now it's, it's low and clear and with it being such a bright day I'm I've, I've had a little look at the river I can't see anything rising in the sunshine so I'm going to start with a nymph um, I'm going to start fishing at one of these uh, riffles. The river's about well, I don't know, 15 foot across here. Um, quite shallow, but there's a fair um, channel of water on the far bank, just uh, going under some willow trees. There's a bridge upstream of me, so I'm going to get in down below and prospect up this riffle. It's not that productive generally, this, but you do pick your bonus fish up in here. So I'll start there and then move on to the pool above the bridge, which tends to be a little bit more productive. I've got my wading stick in hand. I'm just going to slowly work my way out onto the uh, into the river and then we'll start casting upstream. I've opted with a killer bug because it's mainly grayling I'm after today and they tend to respond quite nicely to this big killer bug although the water might be a little low and clear for killer bugs so we'll just have to see how we get on. If, it's, um, if it doesn't produce anything I might move to uh, either a little nymph or even a little spider or something fished upstream. And the other thing I want to, to, to do today is there's some really deep pools upstream of here and I always feel like I've never quite got to fly down in the depth. So um, I brought some really heavy shrimp patterns out with me today and then I'm going to drop a heavy shrimp on like a check nymph style and just, just run it through some of these heavy pools because I'd like to see if there's anything down there. Right then, so casting upstream, just check behind me, it looks good. And just drop it into this run and as ever I've got my trusty nine foot four weight um greased up the uh, the end of the line on the got a little luminous braided loop i've greased that up so it floats nice and high and uh, around what probably 10 or 11 feet of leader something like that and i'm not going to spend too much time in this uh, riffle here as i say because it's it's not hyper productive generally it's it, it's just a case of there's often there's sometimes a, a little bonus fish here before I uh, before I venture up into the pool and it's nice to work your way upstream fish your way up to where you want to be I can just uh, almost fish um, just one handed here as I would chucking up a uh, uh, traditional North Country spider upstream, just wading stick in left hand and shortish line, and just tap the bug into the riffle. Really, it's running down at a fair pace, so that's the way to do it. And just work my way up to actually where I want to fish. If there's a fish there, I would have thought it would just be in this run here. But there's not a great deal of water in it I said it's coming down at a fair pace and probably could do with a touch more water in here to hold that bonus fish no well I've about fished through it it was just a quick little go there and I'm now I'm going to walk up under the bridge and uh, have a good go at this pool which hopefully will hold a fish or two There's some big boulders in the centre of the river and lots of vegetation on both sides. Trees arching over the river. I can see some uh, elderberries on one of the trees and just in the tops of some of the trees there, it's just the, the leaves are beginning to tinge with yellow and you can just see autumn is 
just creeping upon us now. And, uh, we're actually coming into what I feel is a really good few weeks of fly fishing. Um, when we get to this late part of the season, um, we often find there's a flurry of activity on the river. Uh, the trout seem to come out and feed and they start to get a little bit aggressive as well as they're getting ready for spawning and start to defend the territory a bit and fight off other fish. And that aggression can just give them a bit of confidence to come out and feed. Sometimes it's, it's like the trout have had a, a few pints of Stella and uh, they're just a bit more brazen and they, they can also get a bit toothy as well at this time of year. If you ever catch one you'll feel it's uh, developed some fairly sharp teeth ready for spawning and then um, sometimes you also develop the, the kite, the little hook under the jaw. I've caught a few at this time of year like that. Right, so I'm just moving up into this pool and I'm going to start right on the lip of the pool, just don't want to get too far up and spook anything. My lead is just a bit curly, so I'm just going to give it a stretch just to straighten it there, I think. There we go, that's better. There we go, that's running down better. Yeah, so the trout can get fairly aggressive and on the feed at this time of year and the grayling as well can feed nicely and we just just as the air temperature starts to cool and the, the light levels start to drop slightly at the back of the season you can really have some good days. Like I say the water seems fairly low today. You just move up a few paces. I don't want to spook anything. I creep up here as quietly as I can. But I'm gonna get it. Oh, there's a little twitch there in the end of the fly line. And what I'm looking for is the as the fly line comes down is just a little bit of a, a little bit of a twitch, a stop, any kind of movement in the end of that fly line and then I'll strike. I'm just gonna give my leader a little bit of uh, degreaser it's just floating a bit especially at the thick se section there so I'm just going to get some degreaser and run it down I've probably got a bit of um, grease on it at some point by accident I just want that leader to think so this nymph gets right down to the right down to the zone I've seen one rise upstream just looking quite way ahead of me here uh, and if I keep seeing some rises upstream then I might obviously change over to a dry. Right, run some degreaser over the leader. Let's tap that back up. That looks a little better. I could just see the first three or four, the, the thick part of the tapered leader just floating up a bit. So I just applied a bit of degreaser on it just to help it stink. Right, I'm going right up into the riffle up the head of the pool now. It's fairly shallow water, but this bug should be getting should be getting down towards the bottom. I'm just creeping upstream. It's an interesting pool this. We've got a riffle on the right hand side and lots of kind of quick water coming in. And the fish can sometimes lie right up in the riffle. And then just ahead of me on the left bank, it slows down, but there's a long deep channel. They can also lie lie right down there as well but to, to get them on this channel you have to almost put your cast just a couple of inches away from the overhanging vegetation and it's a, you either drop it right amongst them or you get you get snagged on the vegetation and have to wade in and and get it so i'm going to leave that fishing that bit till last so i don't wreck anything else if i have to I just misjudge it and hit the uh, hit the overhanging leaves Nice and wide here, it's probably about 30 feet across, it's a lovely pool to fish. Probably fishes a little better in, in winter for the grayling, I would say, in summer. Uh, winter it's one of those pools where if you've had a really sharp frost overnight, you can uh, find uh, there's the grayling just stacked up in here. And uh, I mean I've had over 10, 
10 grayling out of here without any without moving basically before a couple of splashy little splashy risers right in the top of the riffle here and um, probably better off putting a dry on for them so uh, i'll have another couple of casts and see if they keep coming up probably just very small trout or grayling that was a little dink right let's try and run one up the side then to this deep channel only problem here is you really can't see the uh, the fly line very well with the glare on the water even with these glasses on it and they're hard to see Right, I'll venture a touch further up, just a touch, paste at a time. I'm going right up into this riffle now. But the bug's coming down at a fair pace and it's, uh, it's not really touching bottom, so we're probably just about in the zone we need to be. There's a rise in front of me there. You know what, I've, I've seen three or four rises in this pool, so I think I'll have one more cast here and then I'm going to... Uh, change over to a little dry yes I will I'll just rest it for a minute change flying come back up with a little dry I think a little double badger or something I can't see what they're rising to so I thought it's going to be some smuts or gnats or midges or something can't see any hatch right I'm just about changed over I've put a little Let's play a little uh, size 18 double badger on and um, it's quite nice in this pool and much of the river ahead of me is that although it's such a bright day because the sun's still low in the sky it's, uh, a lot of the river is still in shade okay, I've seen three or four rises ahead of me so I'm just going to fish fish what I see in front of me and see if I can get something to come up to this dry Ew, uh, straight away we've had a rise actually um, I missed it, but we've had a rise straight away. First cast, I just did a little cast, maybe two or three feet in front, and something's hit it straight away, and I missed it. Let's try and see if that will come up again. Oh, it's come up again, and I've missed it twice. Put another one up there. Three times it's had a go at the fly. So straight away some action on the dry. But, uh, three rises and it doesn't look like it's took it either time. It's probably just had a having a go at it and not taking it. I'll have I put that fish down. And three times is plenty really. I'm only casting probably six feet in front of me. just with a little bit flying out of the tip of the rod four times I've had a rise at the fly and nothing there let me have a look at this fly and just see check it's all all right looks fine to me I wonder if it's just a little a little something just slashing its tail at it and not committing maybe it's intriguing me I've had four rises and I've not hooked it and keep on at it and see if it will come up again. Five rises. This is intriguing me. I've had five rises to this fly and it's not actually take. Yeah, I'm in now. Got him. <laughs> Grayling. <laughs> I say you drop him in the net. There we go. Lovely. Only a little one, but uh, obviously it's had a few looks at it, and uh, he's in the net now. Just gonna hook him. He's going to do his usual grayling twist as I try and hook him in the net, and he's away. Lovely. Well, we're off the mark anyway. And when I first started, I thought nymph, sunny weather. And then I've 
few cats in the pool and as I'm always saying to my people I'm uh, teaching you need to fish the river that you see in front of you and it was a, a case of a quick a quick change of action and get the dry on I'm just searching for the magnet on the back of my vest there we go get my net back fixed on quick dry off of the fly and we'll get back on it so that's nice we're off off the mark I say it's ages since I've been out and had a, a proper fish really and done a podcast just because I've been so busy catching up on all the work I don't know how you've all found it with the the virus and fishing this year and certainly we noticed um, a big upsurge in, in people out fishing when the government announced that kind of fishing was acceptable back in May you could you know finally get out of your houses and go fishing and play golf and things there's lots of people wanting to get out of the river just simply because it was something they were allowed to do and it's a oh another ride it's um a lovely way to it's naturally socially distanced and it's a, a great way of just getting out and relaxing and and um, we saw an upsurge in people on the banks and hopefully you know we've had some new people who've been inspired to take up fishing and I'll, I'll keep going that would be lovely that could be one of the new positives out of this whole debacle I guess in terms of angling right just had another rise which I've missed and then I've uh, struck and gone into the tree and pulled my fly off and there's no fly left so I'm going to have to fix up a new fly but it's the the double badger that's doing the business just a little tiny bit of gink just to help her uh, stop it taking on too much water and then we're good to go again now right so I think I've had what, six or seven rises since I've uh, put the dry on I wonder if they are mainly grayling that are just uh, coming up and taking a touch short These double badges, they do stand out lovely on the river at, at closest range. They, they just kind of white in the hackle, just is enough just to stand out against the river. And um, I think they are wonderful flies. I would say if you just wanted a general fly for general dry fly fishing, there we go, I missed that one again, that was a tiny fish. If you wanted a general fly that brings fish up just general fishing when when you can't see a particular hatch and you don't quite know what to put on but you can see the odd fish rising a small double badger or maybe a griffiths gnat which is reasonably similar double badger or griffiths gnat in a 16 or an 18 and um, i don't think you'll go far wrong for day-to-day -day dry fly fishing with that i'm still only fishing i've not moved i'm still only fishing about six feet ahead of me six feet of fly line sorry and um, I'm getting plenty of little rises most of them aren't connecting but I just need one right I'm going to try one far to close to this uh, left bank as well just drop one straight ahead of me I can't see the fly but if anything rises in front of me I'll strike no nothing there right I'm going to get the stick and just take maybe two paces up do I think there's probably quite a few fish in this pool so I'm really going to make sure I've uh, covered it from what I've seen the fish seem to be in the shallower riffle as opposed to in this deep channel on the left that's where they seem to be rising just in the riffle oh, a bit of a gust of wind coming down there right a couple more paces and then Oh, there's a little rise just off to my right. Let's try and cover that. Like I said, I have seen some fish. I have seen some fish just uh, flicking up in the very head of the riffle. So I'm making my way towards them.
Right, a few more casts and I think I'll have about covered this pool and I might venture a bit further up. Let's just get right up and put some on the left hand side again into this channel. Sometimes there's a trout here just off the right at the top of this left channel but the casting's so tricky. A bit of a swirling wind as well so with this little four weight you can be accurate as you want but just at the last minute the year uh, well just clip the water there that's it that's the zone so just at the last minute that you're getting a gust of wind and it's just blowing the line a bit so you only takes it only needs to blow a few inches and you're suddenly in the, in the tree bit of a nagging wind Just starting to fish into the sunlight now as well, and that might have a bit of an effect on the, uh, the fish. The shadow of the bridge has just come to an end. There's a little rise just there, just on the edge of the shadow. That should cover it. No, I think I suspect that's a tiny fish. That doesn't look big. Right, moving up out the pool and just working a little bit of water on the left-hand side here becoming shallower and bolder strewn the river it's just almost a bit of pocket water but I'm just going to fish it out and see if anything's going to pop up for me and then there's a, a bit of dead water really it's just uh, only a couple of inches deep I'll walk through that and then I did see the odd fish splashing up further up so let's have a little venture slightly further up oh it is rocky good work out there work off some of that cherry pie and cream I had last night right so I'm just coming out of this riffle and I've got a, a long straight glide ahead of me a couple of big trees arching over the river but there's the, the water's very 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 flat so I can see even the smallest little rise in here and with the light as it is on the river there's a beautiful reflection of all the trees and the, the sky just reflected in the in the water so lovely bit of fishing you can see every fish i've just seen a rise under the tree of course the problem is here is that the fish can detect you coming a mile off with the vibrations and obviously they can see you and um they've got all the time in the world to expect inspect your fly so not the easiest places i've just spooked a fish in front of me actually just slowly wading up it's gin clear and bright and just saw a shadow career off from under my feet so just spooked a little trout or something oh, I might just slow down I think I'll just prospect up ahead of me with the dry and just see if anything wants to have a go at it yeah the rise there right in the middle of the river easy to be fooled here as well at this time of year and these, these still bits of water because there's the odd little leaf just falling off the tree and uh, in the really still glide it can often just look like a little you see this little ring and you think oh fish sipping the fish sipping something there and it's not it's just a leaf that's fallen in There's um, a little still pool I, I do fish where um, just as the leaves start to come off the trees you'll see the, uh, the fish 
starting to sip around the leaves and they're actually sipping as, as the leaf falls in they're actually sipping all the little aphids and green fly that come off the leaves really interesting how they kind of switch on to going up to the leaves and almost sipping off them right, uh, this is proper dry fly territory now it's one of those long still runs and there's fish rising just covering one now might be a touch short on it short there, he's just come up again ahead of me right in the middle of the river yeah, got him I saw him rise and covered him and he's come straight up, oh he's off, grayling that was saw it before I uh, before it came off, did the usual death roll in the, in the current that the grayling do just twisted it off and then, unbelievably he's come off, I've watched him come off in front of me off the hook he's settled in the current and he's just risen to another fly that's come past just watched him rise that's how little he was bothered right, I'm just going to fold this wading stick up I don't really need it here and it's uh, just getting in my way a touch that's the uh, advantage of these folding sticks when you, when you don't need them you don't have to be dragging him around everywhere perfect, right where's my fly? there we are that feels better, I'm not lumbered with that stick anymore there's quite a few fish rising actually here again you can see them it's in this uh, nice bit of shadow here nice bit of shade in there just coming up gently and rising but they're feeding quite hard so I'm really cautiously picking my way up and just dropping this fly in the just above the risers and letting it come down ah another rise missed him I think they're, 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 they all seem like grading these and they, they do sometimes come up and Miss for those downturn mouths that you have to come up at a bit of an angle to hit your fly oh well we're getting a lot of interest which is the, the main thing and hooking up with the odd one so I came out with the intention of fishing a, a deep shrimp in some of the holes I've seen further up and I've ended up doing a morning's dry fly fishing but again that's how it goes and just want to just these fish are telling me that they want to feed up on the top so I must go bay I'll just, I'll just take a minute just to look ahead and just stop rising a touch I say I've had one on and I've missed a couple of risers so i just take a minute just to assess what's going on they all seem to be pretty much in the middle of the river and you just notice if you look at the river there's a very distinct probably four or five feet wide you can see that all the white bubbles and leaves are all coming down just in a, in a channel roughly in the middle and obviously that's what's where the food and everything's being concentrated so if I was um, teaching today I'd be talking about the importance of these little bubble streams on the river and how that's what you're looking for and imagine in a river is a, a conveyor belt of food and it's looking for the places in the river where that conveyor belt is bringing the most food missed another rise there uh, they do love coming up to this double badger they're just not connecting with it The farmers are busy just over the hedge here. You can hear the machinery whirring away. 
any more for any more right I'll take a I'll creep up a couple of paces I think and if I can't see anything rising I'll just as I move up I'll just prospect into this bubble stream in the middle uh, wind's getting up again oh just like this pass I'm just looking behind me over all this action on the dry and I've probably only moved up 50 feet on the river had one lost one and had about probably about 10 riders right there's a few fish rising ahead so uh, I'll slowly prospect up to them there's an overhanging willow on the left and as usual they're just rising under that moving up this pool so carefully I can see the ripples and the little waves I'm making right let's keep going upstream oh I'm up to my proverbial here right remember it being this deep here I do not remember it being this deep there's a tree that's come down here that's uh, blocked half the river right shallowed up now it's right up to my waist really deep there we go that's better. I think what's actually happened here is the tree's fallen and it's actually uh, kind of blocked the flow of the pool so that it's a bit narrower and that's what's just made it that touch deeper than usual. Right, I can't see anything rising. come this far, maybe I'll keep going could do with a bit of shade really, I'm looking for a, there's a lovely run of water here but it's all pretty much in the sunshine Ah. Tell you what else I found out today is that I have a little leak in my waders. I can feel my well shall we stay around the groin area or just above there on the hip. Definitely feels slightly damp. So I'll have to get these in the uh, in the bath with a bit of soapy water on and fill them with air and give them a give them a squeeze and see whether the air starts coming out and then just patch them up a buddleia that's just hanging over the river so providing a nice bit of cover looks very very fishy let's just drop in that bubble stream see if anything hits it ah, right I've seen a rise further up, again we're in the shallow water there yeah. there seems to be plenty of fish in the in the real shallow stuff today so I'm going to fish my way up to where I've seen them beautiful buddly, there's still over the uh, half of the flowers are still out here there's half of them are those big lovely javelins of purple sticking out and there's can see the butterflies still enjoying them to excuse the noise there's a some someone's using an angle grinder or something just over the fence here and you might just interfere a little bit
think one of the, the things that is enjoyable about, about dry fly fishing is the, uh, the gentleness of everything, the casting, the presentation and you know, you're not having to sling a heavy fly, it's such an easy, easy fly to cast these little dries. Right, I think this fish was kind of just ahead of me, so just working up to where I saw it. Ah, there it is again. Uh, under the overhanging tree again. I've marked his card. I'm just going to fish my up. There's one on the left as well, actually. Just ahead. Again, really shallow. It's probably only ankle deep here. Another eye. That's three different fish there. Okay, let's try and cover some then. I'm just just prospecting up ahead of me before I cover them, just in case there's something lurking next to me. Right, I'm going to cover the ones on the left first. They're a little closer. Just a bit short there. That's about on it. Yeah, they're not. They look like they're not taking. Actually, they're they're feeding just a bit. Ah, oh, I missed him. Another one. These little grayling today are giving me the run around. They're uh, that's twice he's had a rise at that. They're not fully committing to the fly. They're coming up and just going short on it. It's great fun though. It keeps it so. So exciting to get all these little rises all the time. I come on an eight size 18 fly, so it's not like I'm too big and they're turning their nose up at it. I think it's just right. I'm going to ignore them and go back over to the right where I saw that other fish earlier. There's a lovely little bubble stream just coming down the left hand bank here. And it's a perfect little lie for them here, just off there's a wall on the left and they're, they're only a foot off the wall, just in the bubble stream. Another bridge coming up here. There's a beautiful um, bush here on the right hand side, I'm not sure what it is, it's absolutely laden with bright orange berries and the, the sun's just striking it and it's luminous in there in the sunshine, absolutely stunning. And another buddleia as well. I have a little rise here to my right. I say my apologies for the noise. A, it's not an angle grinder, it's a bit of farm machinery whirring as I uh, push up into the pool just in the fields here. Yes, there we are, there we go. Nice rise there and another grayling is in the net, lovely. A nice one, that's probably three quarters of a pound, something like that. Fly's fallen out of the net, so I'll just drop him. Drop him straight back. Well, I'm done for today, I think. Uh, it's been a wonderful morning, and what I've had, I've had, I think, two to the net. I've lost two or three, and I had loads of rises at Little Fly. It's been a really exciting, interesting morning on the dries. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to buy any of our premium flies, please visit us at shop peakflyfishing.com or for more information about fly fishing lessons it's www.peakflyfishing.com thanks again until next time bye bye